In these series of videos, I want to talk to you about hacking your day so you can make more music. Time to and stuff. You know, we've surveyed a lot of producers and the one thing that keeps coming up is the fact that people just don't have time. They lack the time to do what they really want to and that's work on their music. So getting to learn things like music theory, synthesis, or even learning a new piece of software is really, really challenging. And whether it's a job or school or family or Fortnite, um, all those things are taking up your day and it's impossible to work on the things that you love. Well, we all have the same amount of hours in a day, so why do some people accomplish more than others? And is it really time that we're, is the issue? Is it time management? Is it discipline? Are we being lazy? So let's talk about this. I don't hear a lot of people talking about mindset and time management and discipline, routines and habits in the producer world. So it's kind of what I wanted to dig into with this series. But first, let's set these hacks up a bit with some motivation. And I'm going to get a little philosophical here and maybe a bit fluffy, but I want you to talk, I want to talk about mindset because I think it's a super important topic. So let me ask you why. Why do you make music and why do you create? Is it simply because it's just fun? What attracts you to the process? I know I was attracted to it because I love technology, I was kind of a nerd, and I loved how it felt when I placed musical ideas of mine onto the digital canvas. There was an emotion that it gave me. And I know things for me are a bit different now in terms of my why, but when I sit down to write, I still get those feelings. Making music is tough. Finishing music's even tougher. It's a process that takes discipline, sacrifice, determination, and you gotta battle fear and doubt and all this internal battle that goes on inside of us. And anyone who writes or paints or produces, they know what I'm talking about. In his book, The War of Art by Stephen Pressfield, he coins this, this feeling, this thing as, as resistance. It's the hesitation or the procrastination and the fear that we feel when we set out to create. All artists need to read this book, it's fantastic. You can uh, ask me for the link later. So why do you create? Why do you produce? I'd love to hear why. Can you comment below in this video? I'd love to hear. Let me ask you another question. Have you ever thought about the benefits of creating? Outside of having a hot fire track, you wanna show your homies. You know, what are the benefits? Well, there's actually a couple, actually there's lots, but I wanna share with you a couple of them. And number one is this feeling of accomplishment. Have you guys seen that video on YouTube uh, this Navy SEAL Admiral talks about how to change the world. And he talks about this one thing that you can do each day to make that happen. And he talks about starting your day by making your bed. Yeah, the premise of his talk is about that, the premise is that making your bed is a simple step and it'll help you accomplish uh, tasks later on in the day. It triggers feelings of accomplishment in our brain and it motivates us to continue to want to do things and accomplish things. And if your day sucks, and you didn't accomplish much, well, at least you can come home to a nice bed. I, I, I think that's a fantastic analogy and it does actually work. Whether you're writing a lyric or a melody, um, you, you feel accomplished when you finish those things. We willed something into existence that really wasn't there before. This art that never existed was made because we decided to make it. We made it with raw materials, with our heart, with our hands, with our spirit, with our mind. You know, I have some friends that are in construction. You can maybe even hear it outside right now, but I'm kind of jealous of them because they can look at the end of their day and go, hey, I built that, I did that. It's something physical standing right in front of them. And with music, it's a bit tougher. My wife sometimes asks me when I get home, hey, what did you get done today? And I'm like, uh, what did I do today? <laughs> but you know what, the same, principles, the same principle applies. Even after 10 minutes of making a beat, we can stand back and say, hey, I made that. We just need to recognize that little win. This feeling of accomplishment, I think, is really important, whether you acknowledge it or not, because it grows into motivation. And that's super important. Motivation helps us to do more, and it feeds our wills to make more music. And when we make more music, we get better at it. And when we get better at it, our art becomes more powerful. And when our art becomes more powerful, we can really move people in a deeper way. And ultimately, that's the goal. So if finishing full tracks is a challenge right now, celebrate these mini wins along the way. The four bar beat, the lyric, the verse you wrote, the bass line, the melody, the cool transition riser sound you made. You know, all those things count. 
And having our brain feel this accomplishment is a big deal. It breeds this desire to want to do more. And each of us need those little wins. And it's kind of like making our bed in the morning. It propels us to accomplish the next task, then the next, then the next, until you finish a track, then the chorus, and then a full track, then an EP, and then an album. You know, keep stacking those little mini wins and because it, it totally snowballs. All right, number two, we learn new things. Another thing that happens when we create is we are passively learning. And I know it's kind of funny, but we don't start out that way when we begin making a track. We don't say, I wanna learn today. But it happens each time that we set out, whether we admit it or not. We encounter a new chord progression. We realize a certain rhythm works better at a certain tempo. And we learn that certain synth sounds make us feel sad or happy. And we learn how a compressor may be set to a certain threshold controls a vocal a particular way. There's so many things that we learn when we set out to create. You know, every film that I've done or record I've produced, I've learned something new. I've learned how to mix better. I've learned how to work better with people. I learned better routing techniques. So when we bounce stems, it makes it the process easier when we get to the mix stage. I've learned how to better negotiate contracts. I've learned how certain bass sounds affect a certain chord progression in a certain way. It's amazing byproduct. But not only do you get to enjoy creating, I get the satisfaction that my craft is being refined and my knowledge is being expanded. Now, when we learn something, it also opens up a really cool opportunity and a chance to be generous. Let me explain. You know, as artists, we can be pretty narcissistic. So I love the opportunity that learning gives to us. It's a chance to teach others. Really, that's how Beat Drop got started years ago. I wanted to reveal the knowledge that really wasn't being taught anywhere else. But I can hear you now, I'm not a pro, I just started, I don't know much, I know a little bit. <laughs> but you know, you don't need to be a pro to be a teacher. Each day that you set out to create, you'll learn something new and that little something can be taught past and, and taught to someone else. There's always someone else who knows more and there's always someone else who knows less. So be generous. And there's a bunch of other benefits that come from creating. These are just a couple. But I know there's some benefits that maybe you're thinking of right now. Can you leave those in the comments too? That would be really cool. I'd love to read those. Now, I've kind of been gas bagging a lot in this video and I don't want to leave you without something practical to do. So I'm going to give you some homework. Yes, some homework. This will lead into the coming videos too. So it will help you down the road. So don't complain. Uh, it's really simple. I want you to track your day. When I was uh, trying to lose weight, which is pretty much all the time, I met with this nutritionist and he had me sit down and journal my food intake in terms of writing down everything that I was eating over a span of the week. And he was able to, to look at some of the stuff that I was eating good and some of the stuff that I was eating that was bad, mostly bad. But that was really helpful to me to really see because I kind of forget, you kind of lose track of what you eat and you just, ah especially dill pickle chips. But anyway, side note is, I want you to do that for your time. So for the next three days, I want you to journal your time. You only have to do this for, for three days, but I want you to keep track of your day in 30 minute or one hour chunks, it's up to you. You can do this throughout the day or when you jump into your nicely made bed at night. And I need you to get a basic old school paper journal. You know, like one of these that has paper, actual paper. And I know there's apps and I know you got something on digital, but you know what? The brain triggers differently when we use actual pen and paper. And plus you're gonna need this journal later on in these video series. So write down each day an activity that you did uh, in 30 minute or one hour chunks. And this will help us to see where we might have chunks of the day that we're wasting or using poorly, okay? And it's gonna help us next hack that we're gonna show in the next video. Uh, if you have some other thoughts on this topic, I'd love to hear them. If you think this is a bunch of crap, I'd love to hear that too. Those are usually way more entertaining and a lot more fun to read. So make sure to like this video, share it with others if you think it'll benefit from them, and we'll see you next video. We'll talk to you soon. Later.